This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. With the NFL's full schedule now released, you can go to FanDuel Sportsbook right now and see betting markets for every single NFL Week 1 game. It is an absolute thing of beauty. And there are pros and cons to betting games early on because there can still be injuries that occur through OTAs and training camps. So it could wind up looking really dumb by the time we get to when these games actually occur. So different thought process for sure when you're betting NFL individual games as far ahead, but there can be times where you see a good amount of value and you think maybe this is the best number I can get on this game throughout the entire year. We're going to break down five spots where I see value across week one specifically at FanDuel Sportsbook and identify what those markets are and why I think now is the time to bet those NFL week number one lines. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research here to break down, taking an early look at NFL week number one lines of FanDuel Sportsbook and letting you know where I see value based on my numbers. We'll dive into all that here in just one second, but first, if you want some insights on this weekend's action, you can check out podcasts from earlier on this week on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. On Wednesday, we had Dr. Nick Giffen of the Action Network on, breaking down his thoughts on the Indy 500 on Sunday, along with the Coca-Cola 600. I talked about the Monaco Grand Prix FP1 has already occurred, so things may have shifted there, but still, I think, hopefully good insights on the Monaco Grand Prix for Formula One can find that in the Covering the Spread podcast feed, FanDuel TV Plus, and the FanDuel YouTube page. Also have some thoughts on tonight's NBA and NHL games via Tom Vecchio, Wolves versus Mavericks, and Rangers versus Panthers. Game two tonight for both those series. Check out what Tom had to say about those, his top bets at FanDuel Sportsbook in the show from Thursday as well. Find those again on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, FanDuel TV Plus, and the FanDuel YouTube page. The NBA Conference Finals are here, and you can get in on the action with FanDuel because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to use on same-game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt not available in north carolina restrictions apply see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com fanduel is offering online sports wagering in kansas under an agreement with kansas star casino llc gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg colorado dc illinois iowa kentucky michigan new jersey north carolina ohio pennsylvania tennessee vermont and virginia call 1-800 next step or text next step to 53342 in arizona 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in connecticut 1-800-9 with it in indiana 1-800-522 4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 or uh, at, in Wyoming. Hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's talk about the NFL week one and talk about the considerations to go through here before we decide to bet any of these games, because there are downsides to betting this early on, because there's a lot of time where things can move against you, whether organically or inorganically via injuries or suspensions and things like that. So before you bet it, you got to make sure that you think the number will move your direction by the time we get to NFL week one. Additionally, if you think it's going to stay at the exact spot it is, you're better off just waiting until then because that way you're not locking up bankroll for a longer amount of time. You could instead use that money elsewhere. You could invest it, things like that. So there is always an opportunity cost. And you have to ask yourself, will this number move or can I bet it later? And if you can bet it later, 
do so. Uh, if you think that it'll move in your favor, though, it is beneficial to do so and take that number whenever you can. So, for example, in week one, I see value in the Raiders plus three and a half against the Chargers, but there's a decent chance that number moves against me. Like if Aiden O'Connell was the starting job, I my numbers might shift too to the point where that 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 would no longer be a value. So that could be one spot where things uh, potentially do shift. And, you know, I don't want to bet that now, despite showing value now. Other one is a Monday Night Football between the 49ers and the Jets. I would happily lay the five and a half with the Niners, but I think we could see some buzz around the Jets once again during training camp. Once we see Aaron Rodgers back out there doing Aaron Rodgers stuff, he looked pretty good during the preseason last year. So if we see that again, I could see that number shortening. So it's on my list, and I'm probably going to bet it at some point, but I don't think now it's time to do so. So that's the kind of thought process here is, do I see enough value to justify locking a bankroll for this amount of time? And do I think this number will move against me? And you kind of got to make sure you answer both those questions before you decide to lock in a bet. But let's go through some ones where I do see value and I'm willing to bet it right now. Let's start things off actually in the second game of the year that is down in Brazil with the Packers taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Right now, FanDuel Sports, but Eagles slight favorites by a point and a half. Uh, their money line is minus 120. I want the Packers side of this one with their money line sitting at plus 104 at FanDuel for week number one. It's a neutral site game. And when you put these two teams on a neutral field, I've actually got the Packers favored, which might be kind of odd, but I do agree with what the model is saying here because. I think we're going to see the Packers play well once again. You go back to last year, the Packers ranked fourth in schedule adjusted passing efficiency according to number of fires metrics. And the Eagles were 10th. They were very good, but we've seen the Packers keep in place this very good young offensive core. And I think we'll get reminded of that as we get closer to NFL week number one. Eagles defensively made a lot of key changes and probably a lot of good changes. They needed speed. They brought in Vic Fangio to be their DC, and I can see them improving, but it's a pretty tall task for them to do so right away, especially facing a Packers team that, again, has a lot of continuity within it. So I think what we'll see here is people kind of remind themselves of how good the Packers played last year and potentially this number move towards the Packers at some point. You could take the spread. Packers are plus one and a half there, but it's minus 115. I'd rather get the win uh, and take them at plus 104. So personally, going with the Packers money line, plus 104 for that Brazil game taking on the Eagles, because I think the Packers will remind the, the nation very quickly of how good and how fun they played down the stretch last year. The second one I want to go towards is a team I've been talking a lot about this year, and you're probably already annoyed because you can probably tell who it's going to be. If you're a regular listener, you know I'm talking about the Saints as they take on the Panthers in week number one. I've been high in the Saints this entire year, and it's it's relative, viewing them relative to the rest of their division, viewing them relative to the Falcons, relative to the Buccaneers, and I could see why you'd be hesitant there, because the Bucs did win a playoff game last year. The, the Falcons now have Kirk Cousins, really good infrastructure around him, so I could see why you might be hesitant to invest in the Saints there. But this is the Panthers. It's a very different story. And the spread in this game is just a four and a half. I feel like that's pretty light. Now, credit where credit is due. The Panthers have done some things that I've liked this year. They brought in a lot of pieces to try to help the passing game. Uh, they brought in Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett. They beefed up their offensive line to try to give Bryce Young a better pocket to work through. And they also brought in a lot of fresh blood defensively to replace Brian Burns. So I don't think they've done anything wrong. It's just that their baseline was so low, they had a lot of ground to make up in order to justify making this spread where it's currently at. The Saints haven't gotten a lot worse. Um, you know, they have some question marks at tackle, but those were in place last year. And even with their issues at tackle, they still finished 12th in schedule adjusted passing efficiency for the full season last year, whereas the Panthers were 30th. The Saints defense played better than the Panthers too and did not lose Brian Burns. So, it's a very big gap to bridge between these two teams. The Saints are at home. I just don't think minus four and a half is enough. So I've got them favored by a touchdown. And I do think we'll start to see things shift that way. Even if I, I don't have the most conviction that we'll see this one move towards the Saints, I see enough value here where I don't want to miss out in case that does happen. That's kind of the, what pushes me over the edge here to take the Saints minus four and a half and minus 115 here. I, I think that, 
there's enough value where I don't really want to pass it up. So we'll take the Saints minus four and a half at minus 115. Similar spread for the Seahawks and the Broncos. The Seahawks in this game at home, they are favored by four and a half against the Broncos, minus 115 on the Seahawks side of things here. Broncos have no money to play with this year. Had to get rid of Russell Wilson. A lot of dead money, which means they're probably going to struggle, especially with no Russell Wilson and no Jerry Judy. And I think those struggles could especially be true early on the year. So I want to take the Seahawks minus four and a half in this game for week number one. The Seahawks have continuity among their offensive personnel. At least obviously the coaching staff is different. That does matter, but it's still the same personnel. Still Geno for now, still DK, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. uh, And then another year of Jackson Smith and Jigba to get further integrated into this offense. Additionally, this defense should probably get better under Mike McDonald. Uh, They added Leonard Williams midseason last year, and then brought in some fun players in the draft. Byron Murphy going to be there. I think that should be a a good addition for them defensively, too. And you add a a good defensive-minded Mike McDonald. I would not be shocked if the Seahawks team plays a lot better. Geno Smith has now proven over two full seasons that he can be efficient because the Seahawks offense... Terrible on late downs last year, like hideous on late down efficiency, but that could be fluky. And even with the the late down struggles they had, they still rank 13th in schedule adjusted passing efficiency last year. The Broncos were 20th, probably going to go more towards the, the wrong end of that this year than the positive side. So I think people will warm up to Seattle as we get closer to week one when they realize, you know, DK Metcalf is still there. The trade did not wind up occurring. Uh, They've got a lot of continuity. Geno Smith has proven this to us for now two years, and Mike McDonald is a defensive coordinator slash head coach we can trust uh, with our with our betting investments. So I do like Seattle minus four and a half, minus one fifteen, and do feel like this one that will move in our favor as we get closer to NFL Week Number One. Now we're discussing five bets today. The one we're going to discuss now is the one I have the least conviction in, in terms of will this move in our favor as we get closer to week one. That's the Cowboys taking on the Browns. The Cowboys right now at FanDuel Sportsbook are favored by a point and a half at minus 105. People are not high in the Cowboys right now. And I understand why, because they, they lost some key pieces and they'll be forced to rely on rookies in important spots this year. So of the five bets we're going to discuss, this is the one I am least committed to, but I do think it's worth it to, to lay the point and a half with the Cowboys here. Right now, in May, we're focusing on the negatives with the Cowboys, but there are a lot of negatives with the Browns as well. They ranked 28th in schedule-adjusted passing efficiency last year, even with Joe Flacco doing what he did down the stretch. And Flacco was fun, but he definitely was not efficient. And Deshaun Watson was even worse than what Joe Flacco was last year. We have not seen Deshaun Watson play good football since the fall after COVID, 2020. It feels like we've kind of forgotten how brutal things have been for Deshaun Watson for now, effectively one full season between half year in in 2022 and then half a year last year as well. In my model, I'm projecting the Browns to be better offensively this year than they were last year. They did bring in Jerry Judy for whatever that's worth. There's always the potential for Deshaun Watson to reclaim some of his old form. So I'm expecting them to be better than what they were. And it's a good amount better. But I still have the Cowboys favored by around a field goal in this game. So again, this one could move against us because it's my lowest conviction of this list. But I do feel this is the right read on this game. So what I would do is just kind of keep tabs in this market, uh, check it every now and then, see, okay, is it still point and a half in favor of the Cowboys, et cetera, et cetera, and try to get a read on vibes around these two teams during training camp. If we start to get some positive Deshaun Watson stories or some positive Brown stories, that's where you say, okay, I'll bet this one later on. But I do feel like the Cowboys are the proper side here. So I want to lay the point in half with the Cowboys minus 105 at FanDuel Sportsbook as they take on the Browns in Cleveland in week number one. The final game that I want to turn to here and, and discuss on the show is the Bills. The Bills taking on the Cardinals in week number one. And right now the spread is seven with the uh, laying the seven with the Bills at minus 105. And I think that the Bills are actually a bit undervalued here. I like a lot of what Arizona has done. I think the coaching staff last year did a really good job given what they had to work with. So the arrow for the the Cardinals franchise is pointed up. 
But it's important to remember that they still don't really have a lot of dudes, especially on the defensive side. I've got them projected as easily the worst defense in all of football this year. And that could help lead to a smoother transition for this Bills team that's had a lot of changeover in offensive personnel. No Stephon Diggs, no Gabe Davis. It's a very different look than what they've had in years past. But they still got Josh Allen. It's not like they've got nobody out there for him to play with. The defense of the Bills played decently well last year, despite the fact they had a ton of injuries midseason. They can now account for that, try to make some you know, make some moves. Obviously they lost a lot of guys in the off season too, but I don't think we'll see them get worse this year just because of how many injuries they had mid season last year. So overall, I'm still high in the bills. Now that does not mean I want to bet them in the futures market because they have a very tough schedule. They actually, by my numbers have the fourth toughest schedule in the entire league for this year, but for individual games, I don't have to worry about that. And that's the case here with Arizona. It's all about the team they're facing here. And in this one, I think the Bills will be able to put up a lot of points. I've got the Bills favored by 9.5 points here. So I'm fine laying seven because we do get a push on seven in this game. That does help a lot. If it were seven and a half, I'd probably stay away. But it's minus seven at minus 105. I think that's a value on the Buffalo Bills here. So Bills minus seven, the final bet I am seeing as far as a value for week one. Other ones again, Cowboys minus one and a half at minus 105. Keep tabs on that one. Seahawks minus four and a half, minus 115 against the Broncos. The Saints minus four and a half, minus 115 against the Panthers. And then the Packers at plus 104 against the Eagles in that Brazil game. So again, ask yourself, will this number move in my favor before week one? If no, you can probably ignore it. And additionally, is there enough value to justify the potential risk of an injury or things like that? Those are the two questions to ask if you're betting games, individual games this far in advance. But if you can say you're good on both those, it is totally okay to lock in that value uh, right away. That is all that we have here for today and this week on Covering the Spread. But back with you once again next week for another fun week as things are actually weirdly cool during this time in the sports calendar. So back with you once again next Tuesday. No show Monday because of Memorial Day. I'll uh, back with you once again Tuesday to break down more. If you got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Don't forget to check out the other shows on the feed this week. Uh, Dr. Nick Giffen talking Indy and Coca-Cola 600. And then Tom Vecchio breaking down tonight's NBA and NHL games as well. Want to wish you all a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy all the time. Uh, stay safe. And we'll talk to you once again on Tuesday for more Covering the Spread. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 